Good morning, everyone. Um, I think I'm on probably day, day six of not washing my hair. And um, I'm actually starting to get used to the rhythm of it, I think. Um, I'm actually getting to a point where I'm seeing first of all the benefits of not washing my hair so much, i.e. today it's raining. I can go outside and not worry about ruining my hair because it's raining and my hair's not washed. <laughs> so that's a bonus. And then just general things like time. I've got more time because it takes me a long time to wash my hair. Um, and obviously just the benefits that I'm seeing on my hair. I'm gonna take it down from its clip. But first and foremost, my goodness, I can't believe how much my hair has grown since I had it cut with Ruby a couple of weeks ago. I honestly thought that I was gonna be like, at that point for ages where I'm like, oh my God, I just want my hair to grow, please hurry up and grow. And I haven't actually felt like that once. I think for like the first week, it was sort of like, oh, it's short. But now I feel like I'm well on my way and my hair's not even done, but I'm well on my way to um, mermaid hair for summer. Although I do think I'm gonna have an, another trim in between because it's made such a difference despite obviously having my hair colored. I'm not having the same, the same like breakage that I've been having for the past few years. It actually feels like initially, obviously it was like, wow, my hair's been bleached, but now it's settled. And it's just how my hair used to be when I had my hair, my hair like bleached and colored. So yes, anyway, day six of my hair. I'm about to do my rosemary oil because tomorrow is Monday and I'll have this on all day. I'll do like a rosemary oil bun, maybe a little bit of an Olaplex bun as well for some Olaplex through the ends. Pop it up on my head and wash it off tomorrow, Monday to start the week because um, I've got a busy old week. I'm very, very excited. So um, I thought I'd do that with you now. I'm also gonna take my hair burst vitamins. You'll know I've been taking these for over nearly two years, I'd probably say now. And obviously I do a lot for my hair, but I would say that these have played a massive part in, in like getting my hair to grow quicker. And funny story, actually, one of my friends, I feel like we've all had those situations where like when my brother was younger, he went into my mum's handbag and took her tablets out of her bag and ate a load of them. It's one of those things as a parent where you're like, oh my God, no. And obviously he was absolutely fine. Um, and one of my friends, her, one of her children found her hair burst vitamins. She took a few of them. And luckily it was not like a dangerous amount or anything like that, but she'd been struggling to grow her, her daughter's hair for such a long time. And then she messaged me and she was like, I actually can't believe it for the first time ever. Her hair is like past her shoulders. And I was like, oh my gosh. But I've definitely noticed a huge difference with using these with my hair in terms of the, the, the quickness of my hair growth. And also, I always get lots of questions because I obviously had laser hair removal and I definitely don't notice like, because I'm a hairy girl, I don't think I notice it any, anywhere else. And I have had laser, so I don't see that it's coming back any quicker. I don't see that it's like, I don't know, I'm not noticing in that capacity, but maybe it's just because I'm a hairy person anyway. But my hair, on the other hand, is growing so quickly. So I'm taking my vitamins this morning, which I always feel is a little bit of a treat. I've got a discount code for them and I know loads of people have been messaging me trying to get a discount code to stock up for spring. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, so basically my discount code is LMYT20 and that will get you 20% off on the Hairburst website on top of their buy one get one free. So you can pick up like the vitamins and the shampoo and conditioner and things like that and then get some other bits and pieces free and then get the 20% off on top as well. Huge amount of saving. It's really good to stock up on these. So you can buy like a, a three month course of them and get like another three months. So you get six months if you want to try them in bulk. So it's a great way to really hone your hair routine with vitamins. So working from the inside out whilst saving on the actual like full monthly tubs. That's what I would suggest is that you can pick up a six month course, you can pick up a year course, just using my discount code and benefit from a huge amount of saving. Um, I'm obviously doing lots of different things for the benefit of my hair at the moment. So I'm gonna oil my hair, get it up in a bun, put some Olaplex in the ends. I also have three different shampoos. I use the Hair Burst shampoo as the most like regular in terms of like hair growth. I'm using it to obviously stimulate my scalp. I use it with a spe special brush when I'm in the shower. Um, I then have one for like toning my hair. When maybe I'm getting a little bit closer to hair color day, I will start toning um, my like balayage 
and then I have one for sensitive scalp when I have like a little bit of a flare up. So anyway, I'm gonna do my oil, get my hair up, but um, yes, I'm finally at the point where I think like this will be the first summer where I'm like back to my hair, which is such a long journey, but so, so, like I've learned so much about like caring for my hair. I take so much more care of my hair and the hair washing has been an interesting one to adapt to. And there'll be some times where I have to wash my hair a little bit more, but for the most part, it's going well. And these little bun days are very, very useful, especially when it's a Sunday like this and I'm getting to just whack my hair up. I think I'm gonna have a no makeup day today and I want to bake a cake. I need to open my shopping with you. And um, yeah, just kind of spend a lovely Sunday because it is actually miserable today. We've had some lovely weather. Yesterday was lovely, but blustery. And with it being the first day of British summertime, it is so exciting, but sadly, miserable. And I think that it's left me quite uninspired when it comes to um, my home decor, because I never force it when it comes to the seasons. And it's usually a lot warmer in March at this time of year. So I'm not being like particularly inspired for my spring decor. And you'll know, I don't really do like Easter eggs and things like that. Um, if I can't kind of forage it in my garden, whether it's gourds for like autumn or um, sprigs of like blossom for in the lounge, I, I generally, I don't go to sort of like a special, special decor. I want it to be reflected inside and outside. And the blossom is very slow coming this year. So our blossom tree that we usually harvest from for in the living room is a bit bare. We're waiting for that to come into season just because of the weather. And I think then I'll feel a little bit more inspired to do my spring decor. But I am inspired to attempt to make, hopefully if I have all of the ingredients, a bit of a hedgerow and lemon cake. I've noticed that there's a lot of nettles growing in the woodland. And so I'm thinking perhaps I will try and do a nettle cake. Now it won't taste of nettle, it will just make the, the cake green. And if you haven't noticed, I love green. <laughs> so it's a cake, one of the recipes that I'm trying to like sample and perfect at the moment. I got this little brush thing on Amazon, but yeah, I'm very excited to see if I can harvest enough nettles to bake a cake today and just enjoy a leisurely Sunday when it's miserable like this. I just massage all of that in and then I'm gonna grab a hair tie. I'll see if I can pop in a little um, picture of my hair when I just had it cut, because it was literally almost a bob, it felt so short. And then it felt like overnight, it's just grown with all of the things that I'm doing. And I do always think when it comes to hair, like you should be working, because obviously your hair comes from inside of you and it comes out. So you're going to be wanting to work from the inside out. And that obviously comes down to nutrition as well. Nutrition is a huge, huge part. Um, but I always find that helping it with my supplements has made a huge difference. Also, like brushes and things like that. I use this wet brush all the time. It's so gentle on my hair. A little silk hair tie. So it is even more gentle. There's a few little alfalfa sprouts sticking out there. But for the most part, it's a very, very elegant and perfect bun, but with all of the goodness locking in on my hair. Like I said, I'll pop a link to Hairburst and the other products that I use from a Hairburst and the other bits and pieces that I use for my hair in general. In the description box down below, my code is LMYT20 and I just think it's a perfect little touch and I always think that for, for the most part, I hear such incredible feedback from you guys, uh, from your own stories with your hair, whether it's postpartum, post-Covid, that kind of thing. Like I took these religiously through post-Covid and I did lose a little bit of hair. I think I, I was quite lucky, but I was losing hair and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna be religious with everything and hope that it's minimal. And, all of your journeys, I just think it's so wonderful that you share them with me and share the results that you experience because I often feel like um, supplements for your hair get a bit of a bad rep, but they actually work and it's so weird. Um, and it creates a nice, nice ritual for me as well in the morning where I work out. 
etc. Then I take my vitamins, have my coffee. It's lovely. So anyway, I'll link them down below and you can um, use them there. But yeah, time to get kind of ready for the day. Um, for a lovely leisurely day, I'd say. Love Sundays. Love Mondays too. This is fast becoming my at-home uniform. Beaufort and Blake classic white shirt and a Holland Cooper gilet. These gilets are so flattering and the colours are perfect. And it always looks really lovely with um, a shirt like this. Um, and then some brown leggings, of course, just to keep the colour coordination going. The other thing I've been doing this morning is ordering fabric samples for in my dressing room and in Ali's dressing room uh, for the blinds. I've ordered some from Peony and Sage and I've ordered some from Colf Colfax and Fowler. Um, spent a fortune on them, but hopefully I'll be able to find them. There's one that I really like, which is called, I think it's like their Oakum. And it's on like an oatmeal linen, but with weaving. I can't remember, let me see if I can find it. Yes, it's their Oakum uh, fabric in green, but it's actually not green. The leaves are green. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'm thinking about this fit in here and the lady that I had over from one of the local fabric shops has basically suggested three different ways that we can do the blinds. It's so hard to show you when it's so bright outside. Um, but I don't, the one that I love the most, I don't know if we're going to be able to do because of how close my um, cupboards are to this window. What I would like to do is do a sort of pelmet. Now these blinds aren't going to be actually like usable. These are purely just for decorative purposes to soften obviously the windows and that kind of thing. But they are pop a picture that she suggested on screen but with a different fabric and I really like that. Ali can have it in his one and we can have it in the hallway. The only other way is for us to have poles and almost like drape the fabric. Now that would be really really elegant but um, a lot more fabric and it wouldn't be in keeping with the other ones so I'm a bit sort of unsure but when I get the uh, fabric swatches I'll tell you, I'll show you which ones I'm loving and what I'm thinking. But yes, ordered those, which is really good. Look at these two. <laughs> you made yourself at home on... <laughs> you are hitting Barkley in the schnoot. Very happy little dumplings on the sofa. Dumplings on the sofa. Mm -hmm. So I noticed around this hedgerow that there was a lot of nettles. So I'm gonna harvest, I need 100 grams. Um, so that's a lot, but I think I can do it with the woodland and this area here. Obviously these will be washed and boiled so there won't be anything on them um, and they'll be good to eat. I've got a trug, some shears and some gloves. <laughs> I am currently boiling the nettles, ready to make the puree for the cake. So, the cake is finished. Now, it's thinner because I used um, eight inch tray, eight centimeter trays, eight inch trays, and this was for seven. So it's a little bit thinner than I would have liked, but it's still looking lovely. And I'm decorating the top using some lemon thyme from my herb uh, chug in the garden. So just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a like wild feel. Obviously you don't have to eat these, but they are edible because they're a herb. But yeah, looking so beautiful. I love that it's green. Well, I am very, very happy with that recipe. I'm definitely going to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to make. I'm going to. I'm going to make the buttercream less sugary. It's too sweet for me. I don't like anything that's too sweet. Um, more lemony, I think. I definitely think it could have more lemon in the mixture so that it feels a little bit more like a lemon drizzle. But it's not a lemon drizzle. But just give it that lemon drizzly feel. Hello, Lummy. 
Um, so yeah, tweaks next time, but I'm gonna let some more nettles come into the garden and then do some foraging with that. It's really good at this time of year if you can, because I know that my kitchen garden has nothing in it. I'm not a huge broad bean grower and um, I'm only doing rhubarb for the first time and I'm late to the party on that one. So I don't have anything that I can use at the moment. And so this was a really good way to make use of what we've got in the garden, which I think is really, really fun. And I'm so happy with how it came out. I've just had a delivery. I've got for my vines in the kitchen, well, in the uh, greenhouse. These are watering globes. And basically you fill them with water and then you stick them in the soil and it keeps them watering because my vines need so much more water in um, the summertime. So I think that I'll, and also just to give it a good supply because it just dr they drink so much. So I thought that that would be quite useful. I'm gonna get them unboxed and into the pot. And if you can't hear, Mr. Millen Gordon is preparing a roast. We're so. supposed to be getting an extra hour of sunlight. It feels rather dark. Uh, what's the time? I mean, it's five o'clock and it's still broad daylight, babe. No. <laughs> so, I need to get out and do that shed. Yeah, we need to go out and do the shed and clear up the area. So, these are my globes. They look like those things that you freeze and use as like um, ice things, like the ones that I've got from Beautify that they're metal. These ones, you basically fill them with water, turn them upside down. I actually don't know how you get them in the water, in the thingy without... Ah. Okay, so you wrap, you fill it with water, you wrap the end with a bit of, um, a bit of cotton or something like that to prevent it from clogging with mud and then you pop it in. Very handy. You are my body. Body is not. There is not a heavy in here. Oh my goodness. Cheat roast on a Sunday. And as usual, gravy in my favourite little jug. Ali's just getting out the sauces, and those are some perfectly roasted potatoes yes. and carrots. Oh my carrots gosh. A bit soggy. Oh no, they look good. Yeah, they look, they look good. They're a little bit, not massively, but... Oh, I think they look delicious. Like oh, so good. Now the Yorkshire up there. Yorkshire's look good this time. Mmm, they look like professional Yorkshires, babe. Yeah, really good. <laughs> good morning. My hair is now freshly washed and I am freshly washed after a morning of PT and dog walk. Um, but my hair is almost like back to where it was. It's actually crazy. So I'm um, very, very happy. In fact, I need to take my vitamins this morning. So don't forget that I have my discount code. Um, I also, I don't know whether I, it's just me that does this, but I keep like one bottle of vitamins upstairs and one downstairs. So that if ever I'm like, oh, I've not taken them, then I have a bottle open if that makes sense. It all equates to you having it one per day, so it works really well for me. I am gonna get into, uh, once I've chewed these, but I'm not gonna chew it on camera, not like last time. <laughs> right, I've taken my vitamins. I also have to show you my hair from behind. Look, it's so nice and long and healthy and not red, oh my gosh, and not so damaged anymore. However, that is not what I'm talking to you about. I am talking to you about what I bought in London. Um, I thought I would unbox some of the items with you. I'm already wearing two of the pieces that I picked up in Garrard. I spent a wonderful day with them um, and I fell in love with their Tudor Rose collection. So I got the necklace and the bracelet. I do want the drop earrings as well. So that's definitely going on my wish list for the future. Um, but I also have an appointment with them coming up to potentially look at engagement rings, which I'm really, really excited about. So yes, that's all booked in. The other bit that I picked up. So, in fact, okay, so let's get into the Chanel bag first and foremost, because we need to have a bit of a chat about the Hermes stuff, because there's one item in there that I'm almost a bit annoyed at myself that I bought, but I'll explain. So these I might take back. Um, I bought these on the pretense that I'm hoping that they will um, work with my wicker basket bag from Chanel. I'm not hopeful because, they're, because of the black toe on them, but it's literally the only pair of shoes that I've ever seen that has the same color as the bag. And there was this huge like discrepancy when we were in there. I was like, is this the same gold? And they're like, 
Mm, I don't think so. I'm sure that this is, because it's a very typical Chanel gold. I remember my grandma had uh, the ballet pumps a hundred years ago in this exact color. And so I'm pretty sure that I might be proven wrong. Either way, fantastic to know that you can um, buy things in Harrods and if they're not right, return them. Because for me, I obviously don't live in London. Like I don't have my full wardrobe there and things like that. I can't just like pop back. So a lot of my purchases when I'm in London are quite definitive. And yeah, so this is, this is one of those things where I'm like, this is good to know that in Harrods, if I go home and think, do you know what, this isn't right, or it doesn't match the item that I was um, hoping it would match, then there is no pressure. You have two weeks, I believe, for a refund. Um, so this is the color um, that I went for. Now I have these in the classic, like, uh, beige Chanel-y color. Um, do you know what? Now that I'm seeing it here, I'm not so sure. I need to get the bag down. So, it's the closest I have ever got, I would say, but I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it is very similar. It's so weird, it's so weird. This is like more goldy than, oh, I don't think they're right. I think that they were probably right. I, I was convinced because it's this weird gold and this looks like, a weird silver when you put it next to this but in there I was like it's just a weird shade of silver or a weird shade of gold and yeah I think that maybe they were right it's like it's so strange like in certain lights and you're gonna think I'm so pernickety about this but like look but also I feel like these are too day wear and this is very like well I don't know actually it's so hard to see in this light Yeah, they feel a bit like cool toned in comparison to the warmth of this bag. So I may, I may uh, take these back. I'm gonna pop them back in the, um, I'm gonna pop them back in the, the box. And I feel like this is like the eternal dilemma of my, my channel is finding shoes. Uh, is finding shoes that match my handbags. It is literally all I'm ever doing and it is so hard. And the lady turned around to me in there and she was like, yeah, but you don't have to match them. And I'm like, I know that I don't have to, but it's just the way that I style things. Like, like I never know what to say in those instances. I'm like, I know I don't have to, like there's nobody holding a gun to my head or anything like that. But like, it's just my style and it's how I feel comfortable. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit sad about that, especially because they're so flattering. Like they are literally the most flattering shoes with a gorgeous heel on them. Like they always look, they look, they just elongate my legs so nicely. And it was so funny. I was like looking at my battered old Manolos and I'm like, why is it so hard to find nice tan flats? Because these look so battered now. <laughs> and then I went into Manolo and Manolo do like this bespoke service and I, I thought they only did it for bridal shoes but they actually do it like for whatever you want there's obviously a premium that you pay on top but they've just discontinued it uh apparently it's on hold though so it may come back but anyway that was what i got in chanel um i was actually on the hunt for a pair of like deep red of the ballet flats that i found on pinterest i'll pop a picture on screen um, that I found and then someone sent me some but they were patent and so I went in there looking and they were like no we don't have them I'm like yeah god damn you so anyway on to Hermes um much to my husband's dismay I spent two hours in Hermes so that was um that was an interesting one and basically what I did was I made a new wish and I made a wish for a bag that I'm probably very unlikely to ever get um, it's a very special leather, but I was feeling bold and also I'm not in need of any bags particularly. The only thing that I want is one that's a bit bigger. I want a Birkin that's a bit bigger so that I can travel with it a bit better. Um, and so that I was basically doing a wish for one of the bigger bags. And I tried on a beautiful orange one and I actually put orange on my list as well. Um, because I don't know, I just really like the orange 
and theirs. I felt like it was a bit niche. But yeah, so I put that on. And then obviously I got looking at other things. And this is the, the item that I was like instantly, I was like, yes, because I do need a good purse. And <laughs> just giving it away. The inside of this is what won me over. But also I loved that this is very much like what I enjoy about the Hermes Orange. So it's this little kind of coin purse, but, and I'm pretty certain that this is the Berenia leather in like fauve, if I'm not wrong. But it was when I opened it up, look at this. It's like the most beautiful silk scarf with the oranges, the pinks, but then the golds as well. It is so beautiful and it's nice and small. I won't be able to get this in a mini, mini Kelly, but I will be able to get it in my 25 uh, Birkins. So that was like, instantly I was like, yes, I'll take that. I wanted the little, they have like a little card holder um, that kind of pops together and they had that in orange as well. And I would have probably got that, but I wanted it with the popper closure so that you can put change and money in it. And they didn't have it in the color that I wanted. So that was that. So this one is a really, like I thought this was absolutely genius and I fell in love with this instantly. I'm gutted that it's not this gold. Like I don't know why they've done that, but I think I can still make it work. But it was just too genius not to purchase. So this basically is a scarf ring, but it's a scarf ring with a difference because you can turn your Hermes scarves, like any of my vintage ones, you are able to turn them into belts. So say that you're wearing a, gosh, I can't get this off. Like this was such a genius like showcase from my SA because this is brilliant. Because it makes it, I, I feel like sometimes if you're tying a scarf around your waist, it can look a little bit bohemian kind of gy gypsy-esque, whereas this is a scarf ring that you can add. You can see the difference in the gold, which is so sad, but I'm just gonna go with it. But just to showcase on the uh, vintage scarf that I've got, I'll just do it over this, but you basically tie this, you would basically tie that onto there, like that, and then the same on here. I've got it the wrong way around. Damn it, I've got it the wrong way around. But you get the gist, I think. Like you can have it so that these bits kind of fall at the front like that, but then you've got this like horse bit in the middle. So on like a white dress or something like that, obviously I judged this properly, but I was instantly sold. And then obviously it works as a scarf ring as well. So I really, really like that. Now the next one is the thing that I actually kind of regret and I shouldn't have bought. And this is a lesson to me. And I feel like we're learning lessons about um, shopping together. So I wanted to share this with you. I didn't need to buy this because I know better. And I feel like that's a habit that I need to kick because shoes and things like that, I will always generally buy them new because shoes, they, they get battered so easily, they get a lot of wear and tear. You want as much life in your shoes as possible. There'll be certain exceptions to the rule where you'll be able to find them um, brand new on like a reselling site. But for the most part, I think shoes are a bit different. Scarfs from Hermes, I actually think I prefer the vintage ones. And this one I just liked the colors of, but I didn't like love it, but I liked the length of it. But it was just one of those moments where I was like in old Lydia shopping mode and not new Lydia shopping mode that knows better. And yeah, so it's not a scarf that I have, but I could have very easily found one secondhand, vintage, wherever, online, and not bought new. But I'm having a bit of an orange moment. <laughs> Can you tell? And this is kind of almost like a handkerchief scarf. So this would be for me if I have like a half up, half down, something a little bit not quite so dramatic, something a little bit pared back. You can also obviously wrap this around your uh, wrist. You can tie it onto a bag, but I just loved the colors of this. And actually I'm looking at it and I like it a lot more than I remember. But I, I think I could have found something equally as beautiful that, need, that needed a home rather than something that was brand new that didn't need a home. Um, this is the Gavroche Twill Brides and Fronto in VA car orange and caramel. I'm sad at myself because I feel like I know better than this. And it's one of those moments where I was like, you're really good, Lydia, not 
going into Hermes and just buying anything. But at the same time, my essay did not push this on me, by the way. I actually really wanted a scarf, but I should have just been more patient with it and given myself more time. And I feel like these lessons are gonna be things that I learn over the course of the changes that I'm doing when it, it comes to sort of shopping. I'm definitely finding my feet with it. And so, yeah, it was one of those moments where I'm like, I'm actually looking at it now and I'm like, no, 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 I'm actually glad I bought it. But I just, I know I could have found something vintage that I think would have felt more of an achievement. Like, I, I think I find shopping for vintage items such a huge achievement that I prefer it. And actually, the thing that makes me the most sad about Hermes bags is that I've realized that I'm actually happier buying them vintage but it, when you buy them vintage, you often pay more. But I'd rather not go and get a new one. Actually, generally, out of principle, I would prefer vintage. But I don't want to pay more. So that hence why I've gone and put a wish in, because I don't want to pay more. But I want a vintage bag. So, yeah. Anyway, one of those things and one of those lessons, and I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I just have to maybe come up with a different process where I'm like, can I get this vintage? I need to ask myself that question when I'm there, there in the store, like, can I get this vintage? Then you don't need it, Lydia. However, very beautiful. This with a, a white dress in summer will add a cute pop of color with tan accessories. So all is not lost, I don't think, personally. So yes, although the shoes may have to go back. That is one thing that may have to go back. But yes, so I had the loveliest day in London and now the sun is shining and when the sun shines at the moment because we're having quite a slow start to the season i feel like it's been weirdly cold in march maybe that's just me but usually we've got a little bit more sun and so i'm really like, noticing when the the um garden is like accelerating because of the sun also i've not told you what happened this morning oh my gosh on my dog walk this morning that i didn't take you on because i was listening to grace beverly's podcast with sarah's day i just really wanted to listen to that because like I've been a fan of Sarah's Day for like a hundred years and I know that she's had like loads and loads of backlash over the years but she's like inherently such a good person which is for me I find it so interesting whenever there's like a sort of storm around her and I really wanted to like listen to this because I've never listened to her on a podcast and it was such a lovely podcast and it was so lovely listening to Grace and um, Sarah like navigate difficult issues in that way and you might not be interested in it if you're not like you know into Sarah's day in that way but it was just so many difficult issues that they navigated but they sort of tackled them head on and I really loved that and there was like a lot of talk about the sort of early stages of diet and fitness culture back at sort of like the beginning of Instagram which if you don't know and you're like new here I used to be in like that kind of scene it was really weird because I met Ali I never used to work out before I met Ali and then I just kind of got involved in the side of the industry that he was like really into he wasn't working in it but he was in like he was consuming that content and then there was like one day where I was like I just don't feel like I'm a part of this and I don't just want to be a fitness influencer like I started off as fashion and blah 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 and so I took like a huge hit and I just stopped posting about fitness I, it was back in the day where you could like pivot and it not be an issue pivoting nowadays is maybe not quite so easy which is a shame because I feel like as a person you grow so much over such a long period of time and this industry is supposed to be quite fluid and you should be able to pivot in that way but anyway really really interesting and also just understanding like even my mindset like i will often thought over the years i'm like following lots of fitness people and like back in the day and they would talk about like you know what was right for them and what worked for them and then fast forward to now and then a lot of them have said that they had like eating disorders at that time and like i remember thinking like holy crap like i was copying like your meal plans and stuff like that and it's it, they navigate it get, navigate it if I hear my words that is such an interesting way where they're just kind of like you know when you platform 20 something year olds like they're still growing they're still like learning who they are and what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's not and it's like it was just a really open and honest chat about things and I just yeah I thought that was quite lovely so yeah, if you want to watch it, I'll link in the description box down below. But yeah, that's why. I, oh, so I was telling you before I got into the podcast. Um, so that's why I didn't take you on my walk with me because I was listening to the podcast and I had this moment where at the moment we can't walk across the field because it's too muddy. So I was doing the outskirts and when we do the outskirts, there's this little like spinny of trees and there's a lake there and this dilapidated little 
it's almost like a shepherd's hut of sorts. I don't really know what it is, but I imagine that that's where once upon a time the shepherd would have stayed. And it was like, honestly, like a moment of euphoria. And obviously I didn't have my phone out to film it and I'm quite glad because that moment was just for me. But there was a deer drinking from the lake. There was a bunny hopping by. And just as I sort of like realized the situation, a pheasant just went over the sun was shining the lake was glistening and i was like wow what a time to be alive like that is something that money cannot buy like that moment you could give me a million pounds and i wouldn't be able to share that moment with you other than relay it like this you weren't there and you can't buy that and it's like it was just beautiful absolutely beautiful and so, yeah, that was my dog walk this morning, which was fantastic. Anyway, I'm gonna tidy up and crack on with my day. I love that I just did all of the unboxings of everything that I got from London and I didn't show you the elephant in the room. I can't believe I, I think because I thought I'd shown you in the other video. However, before we get into it, I'll make you wait a little bit longer. Sorry, the girls are just leaving for the day. I'm livid. <laughs> there is only one time when I will be this angry and it is when somebody does something to someone that I love and the comments on my husband's um, styling his hair video, like a, it's like a hot poker through my heart and it makes me see red. Does anyone ever remember that like TikTok or that, or that reel? Have you just weed against the box? No. I thought you had just weed against the box. I think you need to go outside, don't you? I saw a little tail. No, it's not an Amazon box for you. <laughs> you can see my Amazon box. Anyway, going back to what I was saying. Does anyone remember that TikTok? Or maybe it was a reel, I can't remember. Where it was basically like a woman and she was like going for people when they like when said something bad about their husband that's me i have and i know that ali would kill me he would die of embarrassment and he would hate it if i ever did anything like this but i literally saw red i was like they're basically they're saying stuff about ali's hairline and i'm literally just like <sighs> it makes me so angry i actually can't put it into words why are people so unkind and like when Ali is like the kindest human to the core, exactly. And people say those, like I understand why people say things to me because I'm like so niche and I like, I'm very like polarizing, but like Ali is like, he, he's like a puppy and like everyone likes him. Like wherever Ali goes, everyone likes him. And he's such a nice person. It's not for you, Porter. Everyone likes him. He's such a nice person. So to say something horrible to him, it's like, like how? How could you as a person say something horrible to Ali? Like of all of the people in the world, like how? It literally blows, look at this one. Looking at the Amazon parcel. There's nothing in there. I'll get the box out for you. Um, I think that more than anything, I think that people that can say that to him, I feel like they should be studied. Like they should be studied as human beings because I'm, I don't, I just don't know how you could have that, you know, like when he is such a nice person. And like I said, I get it when it's me. I literally get it when it's me because I am a niche quiche of all of the niche quiches. And I'm very much like, I'm not, yeah, but Ali. <laughs> you he'll literally hate me for saying this as well but i've just like i went onto his video because someone responded to my comment and i'm like oh like it's doing really well as a video i'm like scrolling through and he looks so handsome in it and his hair looks so nice and then i like read this comment and he's so nice as well that makes me want to cry he goes back and he like agrees with them and i'm like no do not agree with these horrible people this is why i shouldn't have kids because I would be that mum at the, at the gates. Well, first of all, I'd be that mum like, yeah, that'd be fine. And then I'll be like, you, what did you just say to my child? No, 
absolutely not. But yeah, anyway, that's why I probably shouldn't have children. Anyway, so the elephant in the room. This is the pendant that I picked up uh, from Garrard. This is from their Tudor Rose collection and this is the like pendant necklace. Now it has two solitaire diamonds just here and then I feel like you need to like really see this up close and you also need to see it like sparkle because this is such a sparkle fest but you can't see it in this light. Let me see if I can show you on my wrist because I got the bracelet. Yeah, I got the bracelet pendant too, which is what I showed you. I just thought this was so beautiful. It comes, I believe it comes in rose gold as well and it has like matching earrings. Um, but I just love this set so, so much. Such a unique, very like typical symbol. And I just, yeah, I fell for it. Absolutely fell for it. Love the clip. What are you doing? You love Amazon. You love it. You do. Yes, so anyway, that was basically like what I was telling you. Um, that I forgot this and absolutely fell in love with the brand. So it was a joy, a joy for me to go there. I had such a great time. I have ordered my cake tins for yesterday's baking. So these are now the seven inch. Oh no, I didn't get the bottom pusher outers. Oh, that's irritating. I'm sure there's a hack to get them out there, so that'll be fine. And then I treated myself to this, another coloring book. This is the Kew Gardens Enchanting Coloring Book. And I also bought myself some really lovely coloring pencils as well, um, so that I can basically, I think you're supposed to copy it, but I doubt I'll do that. But I bought, you wait till you see my coloring pencils. They've not arrived yet, but they're coming. They are coming. I also have some new bay trees for my dressing room. I ordered these from Patch Plants, but I actually think that Hello Petal can get these much easier. And I think these are gonna be too big. I think my other ones from Hello Petal were smaller. Oh, how do you get these out? It's so hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's not happening. Yeah, I think these are going to be too tall. Damn it! Oh, I thought that they were the right size. Oh, how annoying! I bet if we pop those up, they'll look lovely somewhere. So they won't be wasted. And more trees is more trees. And that's always a good thing, so. Oh, it's not lost. Well, I'm looking very, very red faced because I'm at that stage in my like skincare cycle where I've got like all fresh skin. So it just looks like almost like dolphin skin. And I've popped on some moisturizer. The one thing I haven't told you about is um, I bought this from Dr. Ayad and this is the Obagi Nuderm um, skin bleaching and corrector cream. And um, I use this because I've got a, like a sun spot thingy on the side of my face. It's from when I was younger and I'm pretty sure I fell asleep on the side of my face and I haven't reapplied sun cream stupidly. And I remember it coming, coming up. And then I think I've got signs of one here. And the thing is with my face is I've got a really annoying thing where parts of my face really stick out like my nose and my cheeks. I know people always comment whether I've got cheek filler and stuff like that, I promise I've never had cheek filler. Um, and, but they stick out and then my lip sticks out as well. So when I'm like not even meaning to sort of be in the sun, it's constantly beating down on those bits and so I really worry. But anyway, I bought more of this stuff to um, basically on the spot treat these little tiny marks now they initially go red and quite irritated but if you keep applying i kind of apply apply and then let it um settle then like apply again once the irritation goes down and i just do that until it sort of disappears it is one of those things that you're doing for the rest of your life but um it really worked well for me last time and so i'm going to keep doing it but i've had one of those evenings where i'm like in my head quite a lot and i wouldn't normally share this with you but I think like with all of the stuff that I was seeing earlier, like if there's one thing that will get to me, it's when I see someone that's like such a nice person and being treated a certain type of way. I don't, I don't know what it is. I find the internet so weird and like I find cultures so weird and perhaps it's just me who feels this way. I often say to my friends and my family that I feel like an alien in this world at the moment in that like, 
there are literally pages and like people that they like their content is to make content about other people and they like they make it under the guise of like i'm rich you're poor kind of thing without any background information like anyone that's watched my channel for however long will know that Ali and I are not, and it's this weird narrative around us at the moment where people are like, oh, they want to be old money. It's like, no, we just have realized that we value like a timeless style because we were getting exhausted with it all. And then now because of that, people pin me on like old money pages and like, it's very flattering, but I'm not old money, I'm from Watford. And that's something that I've never hidden on this page. Ali is a self-made guy and he's, he used to be an electrician and this is something that we talk about and love and like it's part of our story and because people don't do any like research on us they build up this narrative where they see like what we're like now because now we're older like i'm 34 years old i'm going to be 35 in literally a couple of weeks i value such different things like i value being well spoken one of the things that's meant a lot to me is when people say, oh, Lydia, I really, I'm really grateful for the fact that you speak well because I'm not native to speaking English and it means I can understand your channel really well. That's something that over the years I've got better and better and better at and I'm still trying to get better. I've even looked at having elo elo that's really funny. Elo elo I can't say it, elocution lessons. <laughs> not a good start. Definitely need to put those lessons because I value being spoke like well well spoken and I want if we ever have kids one day for them to be well spoken and speak better than you know Ali and I did growing up and are like we've changed and it just feels like there's like a one way to do things now online which is re a really hard pill for me to swallow like I almost feel like I'm going through a breakup with the industry at the moment, or like the, the, the cultures online, because I've obviously been doing this for such a long time. But like, the thing about this industry and how it started was because you followed the people that you liked, or that entertained you, or inspired you, or you could relate to, and it was like totally down to you. But now it's like, no, you have to be relatable to absolutely everyone, which is physically impossible. And it's like, if not, you're dragged for a new, <laughs> for like days on end. And I'm just, I just find it so weird. How do people not see in these instances that like that person is just making content off the back of somebody else who's got more weight than them? And so rather than making content about themselves or about the things that they like or the things that they're interested in, they're just dragging other people. When I was at school, that was a bully. Like that was a literal bully. As I said, I get it when it's me. I like, I say things and I'm like, na na na. And I've always been this way. Like even when I was at school, I was super polarizing for other people in, in my like class or in my year. I get it, I understand. Uh, totally like Marmite but I I don't I just I don't know I just it's so hard when it's like I followed people like me or I aspired to be people like me when I was growing up it was what gave me like a focus and something to to work towards and a lifestyle that I might one day have or dream of having and I was fully aware that it might not happen but if I just work hard, I'll get somewhere, hopefully. And it's like there's no space for that now because if you're not relatable, you're not relatable. And yet there's also like, it's just like so circumstantial and so subjective that like, I feel so confused when I'm like making content nowadays. I feel so confused because I'll come onto my channel and I'll be like, you know, this is really expensive. And people will be like, that's not expensive, Lydia. We're not like children. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've got to remember that I've got an audience that, I've got an, an audience of like high net worth people that are here as well. But then I've also got people that may be here for the inspiration. And it's like this really confusing, but wonderful, but confusing because no matter what, my intentions are always just to, you know, 
make content and live my life and share that in the same way. There's room for everybody to live their lives in whatever ways they want to live it. And I genuinely, like, if you want to be the person that's like, you know, making content, like there's so many amazing people on the app that like do like thrift shopping. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so, that's so bloody good. We built this industry to be something, I say we, like I was very late to the early party, but like this industry was built off the back of different people doing different things and communicating in different ways. And I feel like nowadays, you know, it's this orchestrated thing and nobody cares about the authenticity of the person anymore. Like it would be so much worse if I was pretending that this wasn't my life, I think. It would be so much worse just for the sake of monetizing my platform, it would be so much worse. So I'm honest. And I share the things I like and I share the achievements and I share the evolutions and, and the growth. And I share the, the things where I'm like, I've learned different things. Like I aspired to, you know, crazy wealth and now I aspire not so much to that, but I still have dreams and goals, but they're just different now. I feel like we're spoiling a beautiful thing and I don't want to see it spoil, but I feel like I'm too weak on my own to like do anything about it. And I'm usually like, I am, I'm not gonna lie, I am usually quite like ahead on these things. That's not me blowing my own trumpet, but I got canceled for everyone getting um, plus ones on their brand trips, okay? I got canceled because of that. And it's like, that was then the evolution of the industry. I was too early. I was talking about it too soon. I'm probably quite blunt in the way that I deliver things. I always think that because my intentions are good on the grand scheme of things, that people will understand that. And that is not, always the case but I just don't want it to be ruined I think our industry is amazing like we've especially like mostly women have taken the marketing industry and literally flipped it on its head like we came along and gave real ROI to some of the biggest brands in the world and this is not me blowing my own trumpet again it's a fact then we've like established small businesses like you only have to look at TikTok and like I see these beauty brands that I've never heard of that are literally made from TikTok. It's amazing, but that authenticity has to be valued. And there's no good making us all fit into one relatable space when there's multiple tiers. Like I don't follow people that are shopping at Zara, for example, although I have actually just made a Zara haul, funnily enough. But like for the grand scheme of things, I watch people that like light a firecracker up my ass, that, that like, get me wanting to clean my house, that get me wanting to do my laundry, that, that get me wanting to get, get out and get a run, that go on a run, I can't get my words out, but make me want to go on a run, or, you know, wash my hair that day, or do a really nice face of makeup, or treat myself to something nice, work hard. I follow those people. I don't find it toxic positivity, I don't find it anything like that. I switch off if I'm not in the mood for it, I switch on when I am. And I tailor it for me, but yeah, there's just no space anymore. It feels like there's no space for people to just be authentic. And there will be people now that say, Lydia, you're not being authentic. You're not old money. I'm not trying to be old money. I'm not trying, neither of us are. We just value different things. I wanna make sure that, you know, I, I really like speaking well. I wanna make sure that I've got timeless stuff in my wardrobe. I'm investing in crafts and hopefully elevating small businesses and tailors and things like that so that they survive and are brought into a fashionable, not trendy, but fashionable space where we're buying those things again because that's where it should be valued. And I'm just, I'm sorry for the rant, but I'm just sad. I'm so sad because it's like, I never make content about other people. I never do. And I could so easily, it could be so easy for me tomorrow to go and make a video about a big hitter in this industry and be like, I met them at this event and it would get millions of views. I know that. Anyone with a brain knows how to make a video like that. It's the easiest form of content. And who knows, I could be canceled for this. But the one thing I would say is that if there's one thing to be canceled for is asking for more kindness because in all honesty, I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got here. And I don't care what anyone says about me anymore. I've had it all. I've had the worst things said and done to me 
by people and I'm just immune to it now. But if you're gonna cancel me, cancel me for this. Cancel me for asking for kindness because they might be rich in money but they might be poor in family or they might be rich in material goods but poor in self-worth. Like everything is a balancing act and it's always that you just know nothing about it. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm going to bed because I need to go to bed and sleep it off because I'm having one of those times where it's just like, how did we get here? So anyway, I'm gonna let these things marinate on my face. Sorry for the rant. <laughs>